The whole country's destroyed. They just had a war. Everything's rubble and everybody's poor. Food is scarce. The coffee was marginal. You know, <laughs> what could be worse? You, you lose a gigantic war. You have two cities that are nuclear blasts and now you got Godzilla coming. This is the 37th Godzilla movie yeah. in the, oh great. Oh look, 39 movies, I yeah. stand corrected. Do you believe that young people, really young people, high school students would even understand that concept of manhood? And now? because of that, I think we've made an economy where you just can't, as a man, you cannot do it alone. I, I would like to talk to like a bunch of 18 year olds. I don't think you would, but. <laughs> <laughs>
it's a problem. But there's also the monster within this pilot of how he was a coward, how he didn't commit the suicide bombing, and how he thinks he let down his country. And his uh, one of the opening scenes is he lands his failed kamikaze mission at a base, and that base gets attacked by Godzilla, the first and, encounter. Yeah. And, and they all and die. He doesn't act again. The he, mechanic looks over the plane. He says... Go shoot it, yeah. He says, you, you, your bomb is intact. Your yeah. plane is intact. What you? Why didn't you do it? So for the Japanese, they have Bushido. Mm -hmm. That's the way of the warrior. Way of the warrior, yes, And he, he failed his whole family and his whole nation and his emperor by not having the honorable death that he was programmed mm -hmm. to do. So he's going through life now with that kind of shame. And how do you make up for that? How do you make up for that? Well, there is only one way. <laughs> you got to kill Godzilla. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And you got to die doing it. Now, exactly. one of the nuances, and it's interesting, the kamikaze planes didn't have to, they didn't train the pilots to land. They just trained them to take off. Oh, wow. The fact that he landed the plane was a small miracle. He must have been somewhat trained, right? Mm. But they also didn't have accoutrements. In other words, they didn't have the ejection seat. They only had enough fuel for going one way. Hmm. To fly out there, hit that destroyer, explode, and they, there was no, no point in giving them return fuel. Mm -hmm. So the planes Waste were light. They, were, they weren't dogfighters. They didn't have machine gun bullets in them. They were just a flying bomb. Mm. One purpose, a one purpose weapon. Mm -hmm. The war was over. Yeah, so the country was kind devastated. Of a, you're kind of a history buff. Explain, because in the movie they kind of reference, you know, uh, the Americans seized their ships and they weren't allowed to have big ships and weapons anymore to fight Godzilla because of what happened in the war. So could you give some context of like... I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Disarmament's bad, right? Yeah. That's why I always keep my guns loaded. <laughs> right? I don't want big weird monsters, the radioactive dinosaurs coming up or coming after me. I live near the beach. Yeah. But look at that. Oh my God, how awesome. How awesome. He's really a Tyrannosaurus, isn't he? Got the little arms in the front. Mm -hmm. You know, great big carnivore teeth. You got to love him. Yeah, Japan wasn't ready to fight. And it's only natural that... The rest of the world was rebuilding Japan's industrial infrastructure. We wanted them to build train cars and roads and railroad tracks and cars. We didn't want them spending our money on attack aircraft and destroyer boats and that kind of thing. So the occupation, which, which lasted for decades, at least one decade, the occupation was to restore their economy and, and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, they weren't they weren't prepared for a major sea battle, mm -hmm. which is how, you know, what, what they would have to engage in. For Godzilla. Yeah. Right. They I didn't th really explain why Godzilla was a psycho killer. You know what I mean? It just was his nature, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, in the original, the concept was that he was a product of n radiation. Yeah. That somehow radiation yeah. from nuclear activity, you know, created this mutant monster or whatever. I think they imply that in this one as well. Yeah, I didn't see that where that was really well stated. Mm -hmm. But either way, yeah, he came up and just started wiping out cities. And eventually Godzilla kind of becomes the protector, doesn't he? When the other monsters start coming in. It's kind of like, this is my turf and Godzilla starts. Not in this movie, obviously. I'm talking no, about no, in, the, in, this in movie. the franchise. He kind of becomes the protector of, you know, Japan. Well, he does have to fight other monsters in other movies, yeah, yeah. which is, you know, kind of cool. But um, and certainly not in this one. He's just bent on destruction and he's headed towards Tokyo, mm -hmm. just like in the Blue Oyster Cult song, right? They have to stop him and they don't know how to stop him. And look at that. He, his tail is recharging. He's getting ready to have his heat blast. They called it the heat blast, mm -hmm. right? In the, in the, originally, you thought of that as a radioactive fire somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that special effect in this movie. When he shot his laser, it looked like a nuclear explosion. Right. Because he's a nuclear yeah. uh, creature. Yeah, it was capable of horrifying destruction, but somebody figured out that it takes time for that to recharge. Mm -hmm. So they had to get him to discharge once, mm -hmm. and then when he would be like in a semi-vulnerable state, mm -hmm. they could go after him. So what did, what did you think about this, you know, following the story of the pilot, his girlfriend, the other guys on the boat, the scientists? Did you like the story, the character development? Because you were saying it's just a Godzilla movie. But for me, I was like, oh, this is there's more to this than just Godzilla. And then a large part of the story was there was an abandoned child mm -hmm. and there was a, a woman who was equally abandoned and she finds the little girl. Mm -hmm. And now she wants to protect the little girl. Mm hmm. And she's doing that, but she's, it's the whole country's destroyed. They just had a war. Everything's rubble and everybody's poor. Food is scarce. The coffee was marginal, you know. <laughs> so 
so he somewhat took on the role of protecting her yeah. and protecting the little girl. There was a lot of dynamics that way. Mm-hmm. She didn't. But want I feel him like even when he did that, he was still presenting himself in a way where he was still fighting that internal monster. He has this internal battle. Oh yeah. Where he doesn't feel like a man. He doesn't feel like right. he's worthy he of was, being in that position. He was doing his duty. As a man taking care of the woman and the yeah. child. He was but still there's in- scenes where you can see he's like, you know, don't, I'm not your dad. He tells the kid, right. I'm not your dad. Um, and same with the woman. He's like, because I'm not Because he was husband. in such disgrace because yeah. of Bushido that he didn't want her to grow up and, yeah. and she would have a father that was in disgrace. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there were a lot of those psychological things. Um, I had a real good friend that pointed out that the demon in the movie was his demon. Godzilla was just an ancillary monster. Yeah, exactly. He had his own thing that superseded that. He had to prove himself as a man, as a guardian of his family, as a guardian of his country, and as a guardian of his emperor. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And he had all this weight on him, mm-hmm. all this weight. And how could you ever do something so great and so enormous and so redeeming? He's mm-hmm. looking for redemption. Yeah. And there is... A, a something, bit, yeah. something presented himself, but he needed special equipment, just like a hot rod car in a Vin Diesel movie. He needed, a, <laughs> he needed special equipment and a special team. So he's got the, you know, the college guy that everybody was dependent on yeah. him. Even the guy they told to stay home, the kid. Right. He shows up to save their butt at some point too. Right, and that's always the classic. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the guy who wouldn't show up, who yeah, shows up shows in the up. end. Yeah, that's and, a class. You know, movie. you're going to make the basketball shot and you yeah. see your father in the audience. Yeah. And now you're, the, you know, you do it. And yeah. so all that stuff was in here really good. I was into the monster movie part. Okay. I liked what God, Godzilla. Godzilla gave City Walk a whole new, a whole new concept, mm-hmm. didn't he? Mm-hmm. I loved watching Godzilla move through the city and step on things and crush things. Mm-hmm. These buildings disintegrating before your yeah. eyes. The, the special effects of that kind of thing. Look at that. He picks up a bus and he throws it back down as he makes his way to the center of town. Right. It, it must be crazy for you specifically, Fred, to have seen. The first Godzilla, where it's this guy in probably like a rubber suit, and now we have these giant million-dollar movies where that's Godzilla. We have – it looks it's, so close to real. Look at his eyes. That looks like my dog's eyes. You know, It looks like an animal's eyes. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. And th- this is all through parts of society. Like a car that would have been a show car 50 years ago couldn't even be in the car show. Mm-hmm. But now the stuff – you know, everything that's made, the cars that are made now, they're so fabulous compared to 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing here. This is believable. Yeah. I mean, th- this really looks like this is really happening. Mm-hmm. It's not like a cartoonish thing or mm-hmm. a little bit special effecty or something. It just looks as natural mm-hmm. and real as can be. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Yeah, it's but, so cool. You know, one of the things that came to mind... When this guy was the protector of the family, he was the man, he was the protector of the woman, the child, the country, his everything. He was all so, this thing. Yeah. So he, he felt he should be. Yeah. Y- yes, he did. Yeah. But in our society today, do you believe that young people, really mm-hmm. young people, high school students, would even understand that concept of manhood? Um, for high school students, I don't, I don't know. High school students. When I was in high school, I knew my destiny to be a husband, a father, a man. I'd work and, you know, yeah. and conquer. I was a knight in armor. I was going to go yeah. out and conquer the world and everything. I don't know about high school as a millennial. You know, I've been out of high school. I've been out of college for a bit now, but, uh, I think it's like 50, 50, you know, there's some of us who very much had that mindset. I'm a man. I need to find a woman. I'm going to provide for this woman. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to take care of these kids. I'm going to make, you know, my established established little piece of the earth is going to be mine, whatever that is. And then I think there's the other half who's just like, I want to find a good partner who contributes and maybe she can work. Maybe she'll probably make more than me. Shoot, half the women I know make more than me. Um, you know, so I think it's a little 50-50. Some of the dudes my age don't want kids, but I think most women still want kids. Actually, no. A lot of women don't want kids anymore. I don't know that young people can relate so, to, his, to and, his problem. To, I was going to say, his... yeah. In high school, I think it's even more different because now we have kids who don't even know if they're a man or a woman. So not let alone what does that mean to provide for a family, that kind of context, you know? Right. Of being a man. You know, so yeah, in the movie, his love interest, who he denies is his love interest, she, at some point she wants to get a job, and he kind of he's kind of like, well, I don't provide, like I got, I'm making money, you know, I'm defusing these bombs in the ocean, 
what do you need a job for? I'm going to take care of you. Even in the movie, you know, you can see women are starting to want jobs and to provide. So I think it's a little bit of um, more so a self-fulfilling thing, you know? That's the word I was going to use. Fulfillment. Yeah. In other words, women now, they used to be fulfilled by their biological purpose, Mm -hmm. right? But now a great many of them, they want to deny or postpone that, and they want to be fulfilled with some other pursuit, an intellectual pursuit Mm -hmm. or a physical pursuit. Maybe they want to be a champion athlete, a golfer, whatever, tennis player, Mm -hmm. right? They don't have time for that. And because of that... That used to be a really tiny minority. That used to be like 1% of women. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think we've made an economy where you just can't, as a man, you cannot do it alone. Unless you're part of the, you know, top... 5% 5% or whatever? Culturally, when I went to high school, they had home economics class. They actually had, girls were baking. Mm-hmm. They had like kitchens. Mm-hmm. And they, they taught them these skills. I think now women are programmed to go to school and get some kind of desk job or something because God knows they don't do any dirty work. Yeah. But, but well, you know, dirty, difficult, and dangerous, you've got to call a man, that, right? That's, that's also pretty You want to be annoying. a bookkeeper or something, you, you woman can do that and make friend, more money. My friend, I have a friend who worked at Home Depot. And he would always complain to me how he'd have coworkers, which were women, made the same exact amount as he did, yeah. that they would say, hey, can you get this down for me? Right. Hey, can you grab yeah. this for Unload me? Unload the truck. Or, hey, yeah, can yeah. you come? They, they were forklift certified too, but they always made him do stuff. And that's, that's uh, <laughs> something's off somewhere in there. But it is interesting. Mm-hmm. So you're making a movie now. It's a, a monster movie that takes place you know, post-World War II, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that the younger generation can identify with the character. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm really not sure. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have a position on this. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I would like to talk to like a bunch of 18-year-olds. I don't think you would, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that some thought. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd have much to talk about with them, but I see what you're saying. Well, I'd have to text them. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have, you know, obviously I wouldn't mm. talk to them because they mm. would consider me a stalker, <laughs> you know, and it would, we, there would be all kinds of problems. Yeah. I really liked the movie a lot. I found it very entertaining. Mm-hmm. I liked the monster aspect more than the social aspect or the yeah. psychological aspect or whatever it may be. It's interesting to me that that, that, that aspect is, it really was a... The whole first half of the movie was this guy. It wasn't like Godzilla came on in the first five minutes. I was going to say... It was way in. There probably wasn't even... mm, I was going to say there wasn't that much Godzilla scenes, but there was. But it wasn't the whole movie Godzilla. so great. Yeah. But you're right. The first half of the movie... (laughs) Look at that picture. That's so cool. This is how a guy having a bad day. Right? (laughs) Looks so real. Like those eyes are like, that's my dog when he's chasing the freaking ball. Like he's locked in. Right. It's so it looks so real. It really did. <laughs> it, it really did. And then some of those scenes, when that, when he just came up under a boat, mm-hmm. like all of a sudden the water was somewhat tranquil, and then wham! Yeah. Really fantastic work. Mm-hmm. The to me, movies are at a, at a quality now that I can't even imagine how it could improve. Mm. I believe I'm at the bottom of the ocean. I believe I'm in outer space. I believe I'm inside the human brain. I believe yeah. whatever they're showing me. The effects, the way they do it and everything now is so realistic looking and believable. Yeah. I, mean, I believe Jaws, mm-hmm. you know, that it was really a real <laughs> Gosh, big fish, you yeah. know. Yeah. And this is like not one of the biggest budget movies either. This is a $15 million movie. Right. And it's grossing $58 million worldwide, which is really good. Like, congrats to them. Right. So what did you think about the soundtrack? Didn't notice it. It was, uh, there was, there was some audio back there, but... It didn't. It was certainly not some classic masterpiece. It just you didn't recognize the iconic like. Bah, 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 yeah, they had some of those. Sound. They had some of those punctuations. They had dramatic moments. Yeah, but like there's that iconic medley. Right. That's like the Godzilla yeah, sound. It wasn't special. Hmm. It wasn't I liked special. it. I thought it was cool. All right. But <laughs> anyways. So w- without giving spoilers, what do you think about, you know, the story as a whole, the ending? You know, I'm glad you asked me that because in the past we've reviewed movies that ended suddenly. Yeah. And it was very unsatisfying. Mm-hmm. But this movie is very complete. Mm-hmm. The the big issue in the movie right from the beginning is the, the demon within this man. Mm-hmm. And... That has to be resolved. And the story is very complete. And because it's very complete, it's very uplifting. 
Yeah, I think I left the theater with a very content, like, right. I saw a story beginning, middle, end, you know? But I felt very whole. I felt very whole. Right. They did a really good job of that. Mm-hmm. They did a really good job of resolution. Yes. The story was very, very well resolved. Mm-hmm. And and for that reason, you know, way in the past, the generation gap, right, movies were uplifting. Mm-hmm. You know, the hero won or whatever, and you, you left the theater with that kind of a good feeling. Yeah. You didn't have these slice of life movies yeah. where it's just, you know, they just stopped filming yeah. suddenly. So I really liked it for that reason. It was a heroic movie in the end. And so that that's what made it a little extra great, especially in this time we have a lot of angst. Mm-hmm. So something that's well thought through, well explained, very uplifting, give the audience a good feeling. It's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. And I, it was a wonderful movie. So what do you, what do you give this movie overall? Well, I watched it in Japanese Mm -hmm. with English subtitles, Mm -hmm. and I had a problem with that. And the problem was the subtitles were too quick. Okay. I'm a fast reader. I'm a a speed reader. Mm -hmm. I'm a trained speed reader. You know, and I mean, they would say something and bam, the sentence would come up and go down, up and go down. I actually missed, I couldn't finish reading some of those sentences. So much as I'd love to give the movie a 10, I'm just going to give it a 9. Wow, I'm surprised you're even going that high. It deserved it in so many ways. Oh, okay. So I'm many glad. ways. I'm glad. I mean, as a Godzilla movie, which, again, I haven't seen that many, I'm giving it like a 10. Like, <laughs> that, was, that was as entertaining as I expect to be if I'm going to go see Godzilla, you know? Yeah. But uh, as just a movie, all-around movies, we're comparing it to everything I've ever seen in my life. Uh-huh. I'm giving it a 7. Oh, know? I thought you just said 10. No, as a Godzilla movie, like, oh, oh. comparing to, oh. like, going into the theater knowing I'm going to see a Godzilla movie, it's a 10. Comparing right. it to, you know, Oppenheimer, everything else I've seen this year, right. yeah. I don't think it stands up against that. But uh, You have a good point there, but it, for sure. But uh, it, it it's entertaining. I would definitely watch this again. You know, if it was just on HBO one night and I'm chilling at Every home. Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, I loved it. It was it was fun. I expected it to be worse than it was. And that's always pleasant when, you know, you see a movie and it's better than you expected. It was very multidimensional. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, typically I don't like, um, not that I don't like foreign films. I don't like having to read while I'm trying to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. But it didn't seem to bother me as much as it bothered you. So, um, yeah, I'll give it a seven. I liked it. Cool. Yeah. That's been a review of Godzilla Minus One. My name's Shane Schildmeyer. I'm Fred Satilli. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think of Godzilla Minus One. Is it the best Godzilla movie yet? Is there a better Godzilla movie? What do you think Minus One stands for? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, check us out on Spotify, and we'll see you guys in the next one.